It's February and these are the Swiss Alps. I'm about to experience a mini revolution in winter holidays. It's a fact that most ski resorts leave a terrible scar on the mountains they inhabit. So if you travel just about two hours outside Geneva, you can come and stay in your very own private pod. And when the season's over, they take the pod away and apparently it leaves nothing but a snowy footprint. These are the white pods, situated above the small village of Les Cerniers at the foot of the Don du Midi mountain range. The idea is that unlike the hustle and bustle of a busy ski resort, here you really get to experience the mountains. There they are, the pods. <laughs> but they look kind of groovy. They've all got little chimneys, which is cute. And that means hopefully they're warm. The pod was designed back in the 50s as low-cost emergency housing. Now, with my stay in this trendy eco-experience costing over 300 euros a night, I can't help finding this slightly ironic. But still, I can't wait to take a look, and Eric is going to give me the pod down. So this is my new home. Cool! It's got wooden flooring. So oh, it's very cosy. Do you enjoy? Yeah, it's your very, it's very cute. Home. This makes me very happy oh, because and... I was very frightened of the cold. And presumably the pods, they maintain the heat. It's a very uh, new, this, uh, this kind of insulation. So it's a new design. So, yeah, new design. They try to be as environmentally aware as they can here, using locally sourced natural products wherever possible. But there are drawbacks. So, Eric, where's the toilet? Outside. Outside. Do you want I show you now? <laughs> no. Yes, OK, show me now. <laughs> so you have to navigate your way up here by night. And um, it just looks like a proper, ordinary, usual toilet. And there's water in the bottom of that. I mean, basically, it's like uh, Uber camping. The view is fantastic. It's not as in the wilderness as I expected it to be, but I think by the time night falls and waking up in the morning, I think it's going to be really special here. I mean, you know, if you're girly, you might have a bit of an issue uh, not having the toilet right there, but. You just have to take a little wander in the middle of the night, don't you? Which, it turns out, is also just what you have to do to get your dinner. So you leave the pods and you head up to a place called the Refuge. And it's a real trek. But by golly, you work up a hunger. The refuge is an hour's walk away, another 400 metres higher up the mountain. Now, I like to think of myself as pretty fit, but I don't mind telling you it's hard work in the snow. The food is great. It's home-cooked hearty fare, which they source from the local area. And it was just what I needed after the hike. If it was hard work getting up there, it's certainly going to be a bit quicker going back. <laughs> It can't be any harder than skiing, can it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, having been given a detailed safety briefing, it'll all be fine. You put your feet there, like this, and when you want to break, yes. you put your feet like this, just oh. flat on the snow. Uh, Easy. <laughs> Very important to hold your sledge. Okay. Okay. Because if the sledge is gone, you, you walk. walk. As far as control goes, there is no control. It's basically a speed thing. It's feet up, feet down, and try not to go into the sled in front of you. It's so icy here. If you want to stop, you go on. You just feel like a big kid. How awful. <laughs> oh, I've got snow down my arms. Oh, oh, oh. I hope the pod's warm. I actually slept really well. Then I woke up quite early, I don't know, six or seven o'clock, and of course the fire had gone out and it was cold in the pod. 
So I did make the move to the stove and I relit it. I was blowing and rubbing sticks and, you know, doing all that stuff. And uh, it ignited again, so that was it. And then I snuggled back down and fell back to sleep again. And now, look at that, the view is just gorgeous. Really lovely. And I can't wait to get out there. It's time to really explore these mountains, challenge myself a bit and get as high as possible. OK, we've got a bit of mountain activity today. We're going to try and get to a summit. That summit, just there. You can hire all the equipment you could need here and organise various activities from hiking, climbing and skiing to dog sledging and paragliding. One of the other guests, Brahm, is also keen to hit the mountains, so he's coming with me. Ah, the joys of communal living. So where are you from, Brahm? I'm from Holland. OK. To get to the start of the climb, we're taking a ski lift. It's actually not as hard as it looks. Famous last words from someone who hasn't actually been on this type of lift for six years. Oh, 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 oh. OK, there we go. There we go. Eric's looking concerned. She's not in a very nice situation now. You can go all the way down to the bottom and start again. Now, I look an arse and I've been on my arse, but I'm going to give it another go. Loving it, loving it, loving it. OK, here we go. I think so. okay. And just when I think I've got the hang of it, my derriere is making friends with the ground again. The shame! Number two! Just getting embarrassing now! But I'm not going to let the mountain get the better of me. It's time for drastic measures. And machinery. Please. This is my night in shining Armani. Much better. Don't waste all that time on buttoning. So, having completely destroyed my eco credentials for the day, it's time to ditch the skis and skidoos and start walking. There is no left, no right side. It's Good. Okay. exactly the same. So. To do this ascent, you need specialist equipment. These are snowshoes. You can hire them for about £15. They're supposed to help walk on layers of snow. Brahm and I haven't tried them before, but they seem pretty straightforward. Whether they make walking any easier, I don't know. At the moment, they just make me walk like a cowboy. <laughs> and I like the, the heel on the back. You see, we girls have a good time. <laughs> we have a good time wearing heels. We're heading to the top of Valorette. It's over 2,000 metres high with stunning views across the Alps. It's definitely harder work in deeper snow. <laughs> Brahm assures me that he is a keen winter sportsman. Come on, Brahm, keep it up. I'm quite liking the snowshoes. Look at these little teeth they've got on the front. These little crampons. You just literally, you lean forward and they dig into the snow. It's lovely to come to an alpine resort where it's not all about skiing. Some ski resorts are really overdeveloped. You can't escape the people, the cabins, the nightlife. It seems easier to appreciate the natural environment here. You do feel like you're more in the wilderness. I mean, this is, you know, an hour and a half away from the pods, an hour and a half away from camp, and this is what proper outdoor stuff's all about. And it's time to see if that climb really is worth it. Not at the top, till you're at the very, very top. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Woohoo! On top of the world. Well, some view, 360 degrees of gorgeousness. Valorette, we got you! And the great thing about the White Pod experience is one moment you're on top of the world, and in under two hours you can be back down in the luxury lodge spa. This is just what the doctor ordered. After days climbing in those snowshoes, they really work your legs and especially your calves. Now, my favorite stretch of all. So what's pod life all about? 
This is a camping adventure for grown-ups. I mean, eventually the pod life would wear you down, but it's a really good way to come and experience winter activities other than skiing in an alternative environment. <laughs>